everyone, it's Ishi, and today it's Monday. And you know what that means. It's Mega Monday! Yeah! And finally, just like after like a month overdue, I finally have the first volume of Big Street Dolls 1! Yay! Happy Depression! Literally what I need right now. My god. <laughs> but anyway... Just doing what I did with the last couple of videos basically. I'll tell you which ones are animated and I'll talk about the ones that haven't been and basically go into the ones that I really want animated because there's some belters in here and I can't wait. <laughs> I really hope this gets more seasons because it's just good. It's good fun. So there is six in total that have actually been adapted into the anime. So out of like 16 stories in here, six of them have already been animated. So a good ratio very good ratio and it includes the ones like planting the shrimp <laughs> that's like putting the sign on kind of keto and panicking because like he's going to a special meeting and whatnot <laughs> um when that's i tries to eat actually sees udon noodles because he doesn't want the curry spilling on him so then it like passes around <laughs> Uh, the one where Yusano loses her scalpel and then panics. <laughs> I like it basically the title is like Yusano has a brain fart. That's <laughs> like, like the title of the chapter. <laughs> oh, it's just yay. And then there's the whole like port mafia like trying to find the right decoy for Mori. <laughs> And then it just gets cancelled because Alicia's like, the other one's better. Just like, nope, not having us. <laughs> oh, but it's all good. All good. And there's also the kindergarten one as well where like, uh, Rampo's like introduced to these like wee shy and everything like that. And then he just like finds his own ones like actually would be school like, hi, come play with me. <laughs> so they're all good. All fine and dandy. So... Already we're, what, like, a third of the way through this volume already. But one of the ones, like, there's two stories that link together, which is great. So, like, there's two chapters back to back that just link up to each other. Because generally, like, the one chapters are just, like, one chapter and that's it. And it just moves on to, like, a random of, like, a story. But this is actually one of the ones I really like. <laughs> and it's... It's to focus on Chuya, so obviously I'm going to love any story that like focuses on Chuya. And the first part of the story, like the first chapter of it, and he's fallen asleep in this meeting with, and he keeps waking up to find out that the Mafia and the ADA are like playing games or set up to play games against each other. So there's like tag and then there's Red Rover and stuff like that. But he keeps waking up in dreams. So he's dreaming about this and he wakes up in a dream to then wake up from the dream to then wake up from that dream. <laughs> and it's basically he gets like slagged every time he wakes up because he's fallen asleep on the job. <laughs> By Kogyo. It's just like, I'm not, it's like, executive suit be falling asleep on the job, there's too much work to be done. <laughs> and then at the very end, it cuts to them, like, finding Chuya asleep in work, like, properly asleep for work. And he's in his dream, he's like, no, we're not doing a field day, we're not doing a field day. <laughs> and whatnot, like, he can't believe that's happening. And then, literally, like, he could choose him, and it's like, oh, it's going to be a fun day having this field day. <laughs> Then the next chapter begins and he's like, wait, this wasn't a fucking dream. <laughs> and there's actually a wee note that says, read previous chapter. <laughs> it's just great. <laughs> like, oh. And then it's just the field day of like everyone trying to compete and whatnot. And the first one's like a track race and it's like, actually, see, against Q. <laughs> and then Q is like, do you want to shake hands? And he frees Ashishi out and he runs and transforms. And it's like, you're not really meant to use your ability. <laughs> and then there's like bread eating competition with the actor gala ones because he nicks all the bread, like using Rashawn and everything. Like basically everyone like kind of cheats in some way by using their abilities. 
And then it gets to the end and it basically implying like they're almost like a, a, a draw kind of thing. Like it's very close. And then it gets announced that uh, whoever wins has to go against the guild. <laughs> And then everyone's like, no, I don't want to win that. They can win. And it's like, no, 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 we didn't really try. You can win. And then it was like, because they ended up having a fist fight afterwards, they both got disqualified. So they were, they were both happy in the end because they didn't have to go against the guild. <laughs> oh. Another one that's really cute is, is a Rampo and Poe story. And it's Poe and he's realised it's Rampo's birthday. Like, it's in October, and he's, like, planned out this whole birthday scheme, and, like, he's going to have this fake book that says happy birthday, and then he's going to sing happy birthday to him, and, like, give him a cake. <laughs> so, he does that, it freaks out Rampo, and then it turns out, <laughs> he's done it in spring. <laughs> he's, like, it's, take, it's taken him six months to get the courage to actually present his birthday gift. <laughs> Because he was overthinking it so much. <laughs> and then, like, the way he sings happy birthday sounds like a like a chant. <laughs> like a spooky-ass chant. <laughs> oh, it's so cute. And then Rampo's is like, see, next time can you actually, like, deliver it on my birthday, please? Because <laughs> I was literally looking forward to this. <laughs> I was like, oh. <laughs> Then there's like a wee like last panel like between the chapters and it's like actually celebrated on his birthday <laughs> and it's like another wee cake because <laughs> obviously the easy way to win to Rample's heart is like food and sweets and shit so obviously you present a cake to him he's going to be happy <laughs> oh it, honestly the stories in Moana are just so cute most of the time say most of the time obviously we know about the ones that like can stab you in the heart but this volume is like really, really good for not generally trying to stab you or anything like that. Most of them are just like funny and like enjoyable, so solid volume. Solid volume. Another wee story is Kunikida and Katai. And basically, after the whole debacle of Katai going after like Gin, and <laughs> obviously Atagawa, like seeing like his room obviously being a fucking mess. He goes over, pure cleaning mode, like, I'm gonna fix this mess. <laughs> Katai being a fine mood that I feel a lot of time, but like, no, I've organised my mess, I know what everything is. <laughs> I've got everything in easy reach, and then, like, Kudakira just goes, nah, shut up, I'm going to fucking clean this place. And he does it, right, so it's all nice and sparkling, and it looks really neat, it looks really weird, but, like, it's nice and neat and tidy. And then he's like, oh, we'll have like a wee drink and whatnot. And then it's like back to the way it was, like instantly. <laughs> and he's just like, what the fuck is wrong with this room? <laughs> I feel like that's just like a metaphor for like, and he does like, he puts so much work into things, like into people. And then it just goes back to shit. <laughs> Like sometimes, like especially when it comes to like Dazai, <laughs> the work he puts into Dazai just goes. <laughs> oh, but that's a cute way, sorry. That's just fun. It's fun seeing like other characters that you don't generally get to see, and obviously we don't really see Katai that much. So that was like a nice wee, fun wee bonus story. Finally, for like the last wee story I wanted to talk about, since we've basically nearly covered all the other stories now is there's one for Q, like Q gets their, like, their own little story and it's basically like the Port Mafia trying to work out like Q's sexuality. <laughs> like they're like, is Q a girl or is Q a boy? <laughs> like, so then they start like following them around to try and get clues. So then like they follow them to the bathroom and it's like, oh, Lassie's bathroom, Guy's bathroom. And then goes into the, there's like a family bathroom. And it goes into the gender neutral bathroom. And then it's like, oh my god, the Port Mafia is so progressive. <laughs> and <laughs> I just loved it so much. I love this story like so much. It's just so cute. And then it's like, oh, they're buying this. It's like, well, guys could like that. So I was like, oh, but they're doing this. And it's like, oh, the girls like that as well. And it's like, no, it's going back and forth. It's like, oh, that's not a gendered thing. That's not that gendered thing. And it's just like, oh, but the main thing is Q is happy. And it's like, 
yes that's the main thing so then they just like give up and they're just like let's just cure be cure and we'll just keep going like they them and whatnot which is fuck yeah but there's a wee dig <laughs> like at the beginning of it like Tachihara goes like oh like they might be a boy so like we need to like make sure they're like a proper mafia man and he goes right Gein and he goes like as a man and the Gein's like excuse me because <laughs> obviously Gein's a lassie but like gender neutral like gender fluid mood oh <laughs> I really love that story it's just so nice and just like the end they just it was, like, came together like it doesn't really matter, does it? It's like, no. And then Tachihara bumps into Cure by accident and then he's cursed. <laughs> and he's like, Q, take this off me. I'm sorry. <laughs> Honestly, Q is like the most terrifying person in the mafia. You just like don't want to touch them. <laughs> it's like, cool. It's like, we kids like, ah. It's like, don't go near that child. <laughs> Oh, that anime, so that was volume three of Big Little Stray Dogs 1. God, I love these V volumes. They just bring so much, like, happiness in, like, such a dark little series. <laughs> oh, I just love how cute and, like, the chibi styles are. Like, they're just adorable. And it's, like, the fun game of, like, reading the volumes and seeing which ones have already been animated. <laughs> And then there's like that slight annoyance of why wasn't this one bad? <laughs> Even though, like I said, like they can make more volume, like they can make more seasons, like easily. Because there's about nine volumes now or something like that. And this is only the third one. And quite a lot of these have already been in the series. So they can easily make more. They can easily make another series, like another season. But anyway, so. Let me know your wee thoughts down below, like, have you picked up the volume, are you, do you love this wee series, and what kind of stories would you like to have seen animated? But anyway, I think the next volume is due at the end of the year, I think, hopefully. Hopefully. So, we'll see then. <laughs> but anyway, until next time, I'm Major, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye!